Hey folks, it's Ben. I'm here with an unboxing and first startup and review of this guy here. It's a Remington 35 to 60,000 BTU high pressure propane heater. Um, it's fairly nice weather now, but uh, here this year, and this is 2023, but earlier come December, it was about negative 40 outside Fahrenheit or Celsius. Take, pick your poison. And uh, my wife's car, the Chevy Equinox, that you may or may not know of, uh, had a lot of snow underneath it, got a lot of snow impacted underneath, and uh, don't really have a means to get that out besides crawling under it with a hairdryer or a heat gun and melting it out. So I needed something that could heat the garage that's attached to the house um, to an extent that it would melt snow off a car. And you need like 40, 50 degrees Fahrenheit for that, maybe 5, 10 degrees Celsius. So we can get it up to about 0 Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little over that with the electric heaters we have, but we needed something with some more oomph to it. So this guy got on sale at Canadian Tire for $139 Canadian. So that's cheap, man. <laughs> so I, uh, I saw the inventory. They had one left. Two days later, they still had one left. I was going into town. Perfect. I'll go get it. Did my meeting, came out to Canadian Tire, and actually it had just been sold. So I actually went to the counter, said, can you order me one? They said yes. And so like two weeks later, bam, here it is. Now it's not bad out now. We're in the Quonset. It's 24 degrees inside here. Still colder than I want to do any work on for things. But let's get this unopened and uh, fire it up and test it out here in the Quonset. We have our propane tank, which is full, and our power, which is awesome. And uh, But let's unbox it and set it up and run it and see how it goes. So that's is what this video will be about. So let's get right into it, but let me get some supplies, AKA I need something to cut the box open with. So this is different. They have two kinds of this style of propane heater Remington does. They have the dual unit, which refers to how it's powered. Uh, this one is straight 115 AC voltage. The other one can run off that or it can run off uh, a battery, a 12 volt battery. So this one only does 110 volts, so you need to run it with a generator, I'll provide it with its power. My wife's like, the box is fairly light. It's like, well, technically there's not a lot to it. It's mostly just a drum with a, a nozzle and a fan. <laughs> That's what we're getting into here. So don't return this product. Sure, yeah, I would return this product. <laughs> That's why I buy it at a local store, so it's easy returned, right? And we got that sticker for whatever reason, and uh, it's just it's gonna pull right out. I don't think there's a lot to it, and there isn't. So let's set this down. <laughs> Take the front off. And I think these are just to keep the box from you know, getting squished and squishing it slightly pointed up. That's interesting. In the box, we have the regulator and 10 feet of cord, it says. Plus the instruction manual, which I'll take a break to read here, so I know what I'm doing when I'm talking to you guys. Um, but anything else, so we just have a regulator, just have the hose, so we're going to be obviously screwing that into the machine somehow. And, oof, I'm guessing right there. Quick look at it in the light. It's got a low and high setting. Looks like a gas valve. Some instructions on how to light it. That's nice, because I'll lose the instructions. There's the fan in there. And a burner. I wonder how loud it will be. I've had a salamander before. Oh, there's the power button. Um, I've had a salamander before that was kerosene powered. It was fairly, it's a little jet engine in your, in your garage. Position heater properly before use. So, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly excited. There's the igniter coil and stuff. So this will be pretty cool to do. So let me read the instruction manual and we'll get to assembly of it. That's all that's in the box. Oh, and uh, whatever this is. Yeah, it's a register. It's got a cool, take a picture, text it to them, and you can get it registered. So that's handy too. And, uh, but let me read this up. They have this little clip here. Oh, yeah, they have, in Canada, they have to include French things too, so. Whatever. Oh, looks like the English one fell off. And that says, nope, it's also Spanish, so never mind. Cool. This is where the nitpicky part, let's do a tour of the machine first, but so, so I've read the manual. Interestingly enough, they completely omit the connecting this to the hose assembly here. They do say test the connections and stuff, but never do they sequence it in the order of things you should do. They're all about the tank, not all about this actual nub here about removing this. They do mention it later that if you're going to disconnect the hose that you need to remove this so you protect your threads, but don't actually have it in sequence of connect this first. 
because you don't want to hook up your hose first to your tank and turn it on, it'll start spraying gas everywhere, but you need to kind of mention that first. Other than that, the manual is fairly decent. Uh, gives us the startup procedure and things like that. Their quick sheet, which is like, don't return it to the store, has a quick start uh, recommendations. Uh, has a big error in it. And it refers to when you're starting it up to turn it to setting number one. Well, this is a high-low system. It's not a one, two number system, right? So what is one? Is it high? Is it low? Who knows? So that's kind of a typo that's fairly annoying. So anyway, it's going to be like a, a common salamander. So here we do have our low, which is going to be our 35 thousand BTU setting and our high which is going to kick us up to 60. Uh, we have our gas valve. We need to press this apparently for 30 seconds on startup but we'll go over that a little bit more. Also not referenced in the manual is this little guy here which enables you to uh, lift and lower the unit. Very little <laughs> uh, but it exists right and then inside of course we're going to have our fan our combustion unit uh, that's going to be blowing forward uh, some sort of igniter in there no doubt. Uh, and then we have our on off, which is also water protected. So that's annoying uh, It's not supposed to be run in any sort of wet conditions, but they still provided a switch for that uh, We have our propane tank there technically not far enough away in the US It needs to be six feet away and in Canada for whatever reason It's got to be ten feet away. So that's why they gave us ten feet of this hose here. So uh, that's the quick tour It's got a carrying handle. They also never mentioned what that was. It's a sticker Looks like a heat sticker, maybe. I don't know, it doesn't say. Um, and this is the intake. Typical requirements apply. Don't put it next to walls, don't do this or that. And the biggest thing it highlights, and the biggest thing I'm going to highlight is, look out for carbon monoxide. This is a carbon monoxide generator. It creates heat and it creates carbon monoxide. So if you're gonna use it in a small space, and they say don't, uh, you need to have adequate ventilation for a uh, 100,000 BTU unit, which ironically this isn't. They said approximately three square feet of fresh air space needs to be available for this. At 60, we'll go to two square feet, which is cracking a door, opening a window, something like that. Uh, but always beware, this thing is gonna wanna try to kill you all the time. So um, that's the thing about these heaters, why you don't use them in homes, why you don't use them in attached garages is that they create carbon monoxide that wants to kill you and everyone you know. So just look out for that. It's not your friend, it's warm, but wants to kill you. So just treat it like that. And that's always the disadvantage I found on these versus like electrics is that Okay, it's 40 to, you know, negative 40 outside. It's hard to let that fresh air in while I'm trying to heat something else up. But unfortunately, that's the, the beast of it here. A little dirt on the nose, but I'm guessing that this is cardboard. Uh, and that should get blown away immediately when we do it. So well, we'll go ahead and open up my bag here that contains the, the hose material and we'll unravel it. And this is just going to be, I presume, they didn't mention it in the manual, a threaded connection. I don't think I have to Teflon anything. They're very keen to repeatedly mention, oh, you should test the connections with 50-50 soap and water. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and they go about the tanks a bunch, which uh, if you're running an old school tank, you know, kudos to you, man. But uh, and see this warning label accidentally fell off, see? Come on, accidentally harder. All right, fine. Uh, so we'll connect this end to our unit there, and then we'll connect our tank, we'll plug it in, and I will show you when we get to that point. All right, so let's do our lighting instructions. Here's our tank, here's our heater. We're fairly clear of most items that are here. Note, if it's cold out and you've just uncoiled it, that thing is like a spring. That's as far as I can take the unit from the tank because any further, and the hose actually pulls this heater, because it's not that heavy, towards the tank again. So um, it will need time to be able to grow to get to 10 feet away. Other interesting note I found is that the connection is in, is uh, the threads are interesting, because usually I'm used to the grills that use these outer threads, and they're big. This one uses the small inner threads. A, didn't know they existed. B, interesting. So uh, just a heads up for that too. And they're all about the hand tightening. Sure, whatever. So anyway, let's turn this on. So I like to turn it all the way on. Back it up a little bit. And then uh, we're over here. So we'll fire this off as per procedure. So they say connect the heater to a properly earth power source, which uh, I'm sure this is fine. Uh, we've got our 
our little extension cord here that we use for our block heater on our car. Ugh, that's good. Okay, cool. That's rolling still. Uh, connect heater to proper fuel cylinder. Turn gas control knob counterclockwise to L position. Okay. Um, wait five minutes for any gas to clear. If you smell gas, um, smell for gas. If you do not smell gas, go to step five. Okay, so I guess we're looking for leaks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, turn gas supply on by turning fuel cylinder valve to open. Done that already. Turn power switch on or I position and check that the fan starts running correctly. So our power supply is actually on this side and we'll go on. So it's running and I hear yeah. Cool. Now we're purging it of gas if you have a furnace at home. Um, turn the gas to high setting. And press the gas valve button until burner lights. Keep gas valve button depressed for 30 seconds after lighting. After 30 seconds, hit the button. Let's do that. I gotta crack a door open to get some air in here, but it's pretty much as much as it is. That's supposed to get glowing red. they don't want you to run it for a while I think it was like half an hour something like that let it cool down I guess internally before you go firing it up again which is cool that's fine and unplug it and stuff if you plan to do that I uh, pretend I will but I'll unplug the power because I need that for my block heater but um, yeah that's how we go with that so uh, it did a great job it's super quiet compared to other salamanders um, nice distribution of heat in regards to uh, I'm pleased with 35 to 60 that'll work for me this is bigger than 1,500 square feet. It's actually 30 by 45, so fairly large space. Got the temperature right here up. What I'll end up doing is probably hanging a ceiling fan, like two by four by eight down and then putting a fan on it and then having it kind of blow down so my heat doesn't all disappear up into the attic space there. But, and keep it churning so if it does create carbon monoxide, it will eventually vent out the door. Uh, carbon monoxide does not sink or float, it's just kind of in there, so you gotta have to just do air exchange with that. Um, but I think it's great for the price, hard to beat. Convenience too, for paint tanks are not overly expensive here. I think that was about $25 to a trade, cheaper to fill, uh, but the tank I had was old, so by 
getting a new one there. They'll renew that old tank and I get a good one, so that's cool too. Uh, if you have any questions on the Remington, like how's it going, um, no doubt. Like I said, I'm going to actually move this to the attached garage that we have to help thaw out the wife's car when it gets cold again. Um, so that'll be, and we do have a carbon monoxide detector installed in the house, brand new, purchased with this thing uh, that's in the adjoining room so that uh, we can monitor that. We'll have adequate ventilation as well. Remember, two purposes of this device, heat you and to kill you. So let's try to thwart it in one and have it heat the other, right? So uh, if you have any questions, ask them. Uh, feel free to leave comments too, if you've had one and you like it or you don't like it. This is the simple model. It's very, it's, the other one is currently on sale, Canadian Tire, and this is as of January 2023. Uh, the dual connection one with dual power is what it means. Power, and it can run off a battery. This one just runs off power. Um, and subscribe to Red Barn Homestead, where we do all our box openings and stuff. And if you wanted to see more about stuff in the garage or the Kwanzaa here, uh, feel free to check out my other channel, Turbo 231. And you guys have a good day.